and welcome to this video and we're going to look at this question that was requested on Wiseant looking at margin of error in the topic or course of statistics. We're going to start with reading the question and talk about how do we, you know, figure out the setup and um, apply what we're given to actually answer the question. So it reads in a survey, 28 people were asked how much they spent on their child's last birthday gift. The results were roughly bell shaped with a mean of $38 and a standard deviation of $4. Find the margin of error at an 80% confidence level. And we're gonna give our answer out to two decimal places approximately. So first things first, we want to just make sure we understand the, I like to call it settings of the situation, right? Uh, we wanna know what is the parameter that we're set in. And there's always going to be the three, the big three that we're working with. There may be others out there, but these are the three that are usually taught in statistic, um, statistics. So you have the mean, proportion, and then you have variance slash standard deviation. Sometimes they're switched, you know, between each other, but they represent the same thing. Okay, they're just different numbers. So in this case, we are talking about a mean. They actually use the word mean in this case. Sometimes they use the word average. And so we know then that it's still a mean. Then the next thing we have to figure out is what type of distribution? Now, real quick, the proportion always uses the Z distribution and the variance standard deviation one always uses chi squared, spelled C-H-I, and then the square part. Okay, but the mean has two, right? It's either going to be Z or T. This was probably the trickiest part of this problem in setting it up. It's like once you set it up, it's smooth sailing. So how do we know which one it is? It's going to depend on whether you have a sigma value or no sigma value. And if you have a sigma value, then you go with the Z distribution. If you don't have a sigma value, you go with the T distribution. So this one seems to be really coded, okay? Um, you have to decode what they're talking about. And we're gonna use context clues in this to figure out what they're saying in these sentences. Now, this is how I read it. It starts off saying in a survey and 28 people were asked to talk about something, ask or answer something. And from that survey, let's call it a study, which we tend to use a sample for most of the time, you can have a study that is using the entire population. Okay, that's definitely possible. And then that means you're going to probably have, you can, you can call it then a standard deviation sigma for the population, right? But in this case, this is sounding like a sample, all right? Um, and so the results of that of this survey was the mean is 38, standard deviation is 4. And standard deviation is what we're looking at, what we're really focused on. We're going to figure out, is it, is it sigma or is it not sigma? And based on what I like to call context clues in this case, we're using context clues and reading skills, it's sounding like it's not sigma, but rather the other symbol for standard deviation, S. This is probably our sample standard deviation. Because as this sentence is read and how, how it follows up the last sentence, the topic sentence of this problem, it's sounding like it's coming from a sample. So hopefully that makes sense because this is really important to, to, to notice or to recognize in a problem when they, when they re write it in code like this. You have to really break it down and figure out which one is it. So we're going to go with the T distribution and understand the T distribution, including the numbers, um, what's involved in finding the critical value from the T distribution is completely different from the Z distribution. And that's why it's so important to know which one you're working with, right? So we're gonna gather our notes here, or the, the information they give us. We have an N value of 28, a mean of 38, and a standard deviation, we're gonna call it sample standard deviation of four. And I'm going to rewrite this information here. So since it's from, from, coming from the sample, we'll call it X bar for the mean. And then we know it's S for the standard deviation of the sample. Last thing is we have a confidence level. And with that plus 
what we're going to use for the t distribution is the degrees of freedom, which is m minus 1. We'll be able to find the critical value that's going to help us find or calculate the margin of error. We'll get into that formula in a bit. Okay, so degrees of freedom is going to be 27, simply 28 minus 1. And with the conf uh, confidence level of 80%, we'll find the T distribution. So before we get into all of that, let's just talk real quick. What is the formula for the margin of error? So at this point, um, if you've been going through the uh, lectures or whatever learning material you have on this concept, you learned that this margin of error is coming from the confidence interval formula. Now, since we are talking about a confidence interval for the mean in terms of the t distribution, sometimes you'll see it called t, what, what would it be, t interval? Or I'm going to put the full thing. Sometimes it's called t confidence, t interval, or t confidence interval because it's not just about the parameter, it's also about the type of distribution when it comes to the mean especially. So the formula for this is, I'm going to write the full thing first, is x bar minus the margin of error, which in this case is the critical value t, notice the subscript alpha half, all right, times the standard error, which you learn from sampling distribution, that is s over the square root of m. And then that is less than the true mean in which we're always striving to estimate, right? And that's the whole point of this confidence interval point estimate and all of that, right? So it's less than the true mean. And then the true mean is less than the upper boundary of this interval, which is simply the stuff to the left, but you're now adding the margin of error to that point estimate X bar. And this is just one way in which we can look at the confidence interval. You may also see it written as the X bar plus or minus the margin of error. And then lastly, in terms of the confidence interval, you can see the lower boundary, comma, the upper boundary in interval notation. So just kind of reviewing that real quick. All right. And so we're going to laser focus on this part of the formula. Again, this is our margin of error, and this is all we need to find the margin of error. Um, depending on your class, you may use the, the symbol E, capital E, or you may have it spelled out M-O-E, or you may use some other symbol. Whatever you use for the class, you use that, but just know this is the formula, right? This is the, the full formula, okay? And we're going to plug in all of these values, but remember, we need we need to find that critical value. So let's go and do that. I'm going to use the chart here. And I really like the T chart versus the Z chart when it comes to confidence interval because and hypothesis testing um, because it's, it's, it has, I don't know, it just seems more thorough when it comes to confidence levels and alpha levels, okay? So I really like how that's written out and it's pretty clear. All you have to do is then find the confidence level and these five are the most common that's why you see these written in the chart when it's something different then you have to you know do some extra work maybe use technology to find the confidence sorry the um critical value but 80 percent is here on my chart so that's great and then we're going to look for that degrees of freedom which again is 27. so a little bit further down here we have 27 thankfully it's shown all right, we don't have to, you know, estimate in any kind of way on the chart. And we see where they cross. And these numbers out here, all of these numbers are our different critical values, T alpha half. So 1.314 is our T alpha half. Let me keep my colors going here. Okay. So now that we have everything, we just need to plug in those variables that are being asked for to calculate the margin of error. So we have 1.314, and then we have the standard deviation for the sample four over the square root of N28. So if you have some type of calculator, um, especially something like the TI-36 or the TI-84, you can literally write this whole thing out like that. I'm gonna use Desmos to showcase this. So again, Desmos is pretty great. 
Um, I wish I had this when I was in college. I'm I'm literally saying that. I sound like <laughs> I sound like I'm like, you know, getting up there. I'm not. But <laughs> you know, this is one of those tools that I didn't actually have. And it it came out immediately after I finished college or like right around the time I was wrapping up college. But I already taken all my math classes. So yeah. And we're gonna go to math tools and I'm gonna go to the scientific calculator because it highlights the graphing calculator in the home page, but that's strictly for graphing. We're not doing that. We're simply working with a formula. And you can type it out down here, or you can use your keyboard. So I'm just going to do that. You may hear some typing. But I'm going to literally type what we have written exactly. And that's what I like about using a scientific calculator or the handheld, say, TI-84. I could type it out like that, and I get a really nice answer. Um, I'm going to get a really precise answer and then I can approximate it myself. So um, let me just click enter there. And to the far right is our answer, really long decimal, but we only have to, you know, write it out to two decimal places, which makes sense because we're talking in terms of US dollars. So this is the, you know, the number. Let me use my approximate equal. Okay. So this is the number, but let me add in the unit because this is a more thorough answer or response, okay? So all in all, the margin of error given this information would be 99 cents, right? Nearly $1, okay? That is the margin of error for this uh, normal distribution. We're gonna assume normal distribution. They said roughly bell-shaped, right? So that is pretty much it so notice that if you were to use the z-score which i'm not going to get into this part on the, on the the screen here but if you were to use the z-score you're going to get a different margin of error and let me just show you why so um for 80 percent confidence level we would then have let me just i'm going to use the negative side for this part because it will just be quicker to find all right so for an 80 percent confidence level, the area that we would use to find the z-score, let's say if you're using the chart, would be 0.10. So we go and look for 0.10. And this is literally the process to do if, you know, this is one of those uncommon ones, but if you memorize it, that's cool. If not, you have to do all this. <laughs> okay. But, um, you know, you would see that, okay, it looks like it's closer to this one. I would actually do subtraction but it's gonna be something like 1.28, which I think that's what it is. I think it's closer to that area. So you would lean on that area for that Z-score. So the Z-score would be 1.28. We know to use the positive Z-score, not the negative. And it will give you a different value or answer, okay? So just be wary of that. Z and T are not the same. Just wanted to really emphasize that point, okay? But based on how this is written, I would say this is using T distribution. Please go by your own discretion, what you've learned in class, how your professor has presented things, and see if this matches up or if there's any discrepancy. Okay, don't just take this as face value. This is what it is. You know, um, tutors make it uh, make um, mistakes too. <laughs> so hopefully, I didn't make a mistake um, because it really matters that you start off right at the beginning. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, and please, you know, uh, let us know if you have any other questions and we'd be happy to answer them and help you out on your studies here in statistics. All right, and we'll see you around.